fighter pilot and NASA flight director and manager, Gene Kranz served as NASA's second flight director, directing missions of the Gemini and Apollo programs, including the first lunar landing of the mission, the mission for Apollo 11. Best known for directing the successful efforts by the mission control team to save the crew of Apollo 13, Gene played, was portrayed in the film Apollo 13, that I think most of us have seen, by actor Ed Harris. His many accolades include recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the NASA Distinguished Service Medal, NASA Outstanding Leadership Medal, NASA Exceptional Service Medal, and also he was critical to our efforts to secure funding to restore the Mission Operations Control Room at NASA Johnson Space Center that we inaugurated just three weeks ago. So without So without further delay, please join me in welcoming to the podium, Gene Kranz. Before I start, restoring mission control, we found a, uh, some 16 millimeter film of the mission control team during the landing. It had never been used because it was not of sufficient quality to match some of the more high tech productions nowadays. And with the help of Space City Films, basically I've turned this into a silent movie that I will be discussing and briefing and basically providing a basically running commentary of what was happening during the minutes of the first lunar landing. You know, it's really a uh, incredible opportunity to be here and landing minus one day. Think about this, we're 50 years into this business. I don't feel 50 years older. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a uh, it's real, real great pleasure. It's an honor to be here, an honor to be representing NASA and my mission control teams as I tour the country and basically address and discuss this memorable day, magnificent day in American history. You know, the Apollo 11 landing is ranked among the 10 most world-changing events of the 20th century. Looking back 50 years, it came about as a very unique confluence of events, Cold War, political necessity, presidential commitment, scientific and technological ability, economic prosperity, and a public mood. The 60s was a unique and watershed period in American history. And this year we will celebrate this great event. You know, when the President Kennedy made his speech, the Sputnik had been orbiting overhead for about four years. One year prior to his speech, the Russians had sent the first man, Yuri Gagarin, in orbit. And by our estimates, America was behind by at least two years when President Kennedy challenged us not to beat the Russians, but to beat them to the moon. His words, it is time to take the first <coughs> strides, time for a great American enterprise. Time. to achieve the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning safely to Earth. For those of us watching and working in the early spaceflight programs, I think he described the challenge we faced because he used the term not because it is easy, but because it is hard. It had a very personal meaning for us. One month prior to the speech, we had blown up our second Atlas rocket. Three weeks prior to the speech, we had launched Alan Shepard. He had a 15-minute flight to 107 miles, and we had a total of 15 minutes in space. We'd never achieved orbit, and we were directed by the president to go to the moon. 